Hi everyone, it's Professor Primitive, and in this video we're going to talk about the law of cosines. So as we saw in the previous video, the law of sines cannot be used directly to solve triangles if we know two sides and the angle between them or all three sides. In these two cases, we're going to use the law of cosines. So in case three, if you have a side, an angle, and a side, so in other words you have an SAS triangle, you have two sides that are known and you do not have the included side opposite the angle that's also known. So in this case, you cannot use the law of sines. Or in case four, if you have side, side, side triangle or an SSS triangle, you have all three sides known, but you don't have any of the three angles. You cannot use a law of sines. You need to use what's called the law of cosines. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the law of cosines to solve oblique triangles and also how to solve applied problems using the law of cosines. So the law of cosines. The law of cosines states that any square of any side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus twice the product of those two sides times the cosine of the included angle in the triangle. So again, to simplify the notation, we're going to label the oblique triangle so that side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, and side C is opposite angle C. So the theorem, the law of cosines, so in triangle ABC, we have the following three different statements or three different formulas. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared, subtract so two times B times C times cosine of angle A. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared, subtract so two times A times C times cosine of angle B, or C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, subtract so two AB times cosine of angle C. Notice that you have the square of one side of the triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides of the triangle added together. And then you also have to subtract two times the product of those two sides, B and C, or two A and C, or two A and B. And then you have to multiply by also cosine of the angle that's included in your triangle. So notice it's cosine of angle A because A squared is isolated on the left side of the equation. Cosine of angle B because you have B squared isolated on the left side of the equation or cosine of angle C, where you have C squared isolated on the left side of the equation. If one of the angles in the triangle, let's say angle C, is actually a right angle, then the cosine of a 90 degree angle, or a pi over two radian angle, actually is equal to zero. And so the law of cosines actually reduces to the Pythagorean theorem, because cosine of the angle will be zero, and you will not have two times B times C, or two times A times C, or two times A times B, times cosine, because cosine will be zero. And so you'll have a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared, or b squared equals a squared plus c squared, or c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, which is just the Pythagorean theorem. So in other words, the Pythagorean theorem is a very special case for the law of cosines. The law of cosines must be used for oblique triangles or right triangles, whereas Pythagorean theorem can be used for right triangles. So let's take a look at example one. Example one, length of a tunnel. A tunnel is to be built through a mountain to estimate the length of the tunnel, a surveyor makes a measurement shown in the figure below. Use the surveyor's data to approximate the length of the tunnel. So you have this surveyor at point C on your triangle. You have point A is on one side of the mountain and point B is on the opposite side of the mountain and the tunnel will go between points A and B through the mountain. So angle C is given to us as 82.4 degrees. The length between A and C is 388 feet and the length between C and B is 212 feet. Notice you actually have two sides of the triangle known, 388 feet and 212 feet, and you also have one included angle, 82.4 degrees, but you do not know the opposite side from the angle 82.4 degrees, or angle C. So you have to use the law of cosines. You have two sides that are known, and neither of those two sides is opposite the included angle. So you can't use the law of sines, you have to use the law of cosines. So you have an oblique triangle, an SAS triangle, or a side angle side triangle. So the law of cosines states that if we're using angle C, 82.4 degrees, then we'll use the third formula. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, subtract two times A times B times cosine of angle C. We're using this formula because we know what cosine of C is. It's cosine of 82.4 degrees. We'll call A 388 feet, and we'll call B 212 feet. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, subtract two AB times cosine of C. C is what we're trying to find. It's the side that's opposite angle C, and that is the length between A and B, which was the length of the tunnel. So C squared is equal to 212 squared, one of the sides squared, plus 388 squared, the other side squared. Subtract two times 212 times 388 times cosine of the included angle, 82.4 degrees. And so C squared is equal to 44,944 plus 150,544 after you square 
212 and square 388 separately, subtract 164,512 times cosine of 82.4 degrees, which will be approximately 44,944 plus 150,544, subtract 164,512 times cosine of 82.4 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode, and this is approximately 173,730. 0.2367. Well, this is what c squared is equal to. We want to find out what is c. So now take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power on the left side of the equation so you can get c by itself. So c is equal to plus or minus square root of this answer. Well, keep in mind that c was a distance between points a and b, or it's the length of the tunnel. It cannot be a negative answer, and so we only have the positive answer to worry about. We'll have square root of 173,730.2367. And that's approximately 416.81 if you round the two decimal places. So using the law of cosines, we found out the length of the mountain tunnel is 416.81 feet. So let's try example two. Example two, towing a barge. Two tugboats that are 120 feet apart pull a barge as shown in the following figure. So you have the barge and then the two tugboats are actually attached to the barge and they're actually towing it. If the length of one cable is 212 feet, so one cable between the tugboat and the barge is 212 feet, and the length of the other cable is 230 feet, so that's the length of the other cable between the tugboat and the barge. Use the law of cosines to find the angle formed between the two cables. And so the two tugboats are 120 feet, you have the length 212 feet and the length 230 feet. Notice that this is a side-side-side triangle, or an SSS triangle. So we're going to let angle A be the angle between the two cables from the tugboats to the barge. We know three sides, but we do not know any of the three angles. So this is an oblique triangle. It's an SSS triangle or a side-side-side triangle. Since we're trying to find out angle A, we need to use this formula. Lowercase a squared, the length of side a squared, is equal to b squared plus c squared to track 2 times b times c times cosine of angle A. And so a squared would be the side opposite angle A. That's a length of 120 feet. So 120 squared is equal to 212 squared will be b squared plus 230 squared will be c squared. So track 2 times 212 times 230 times cosine of a. Well, 120 squared will be 14,400, and then 2 times 212 times 230 is 97,520. So you have 14,400 is equal to 44,944 plus 52,900, subtract 97,520 times cosine of A. We want to get cosine of A by itself in this equation so that we can find out what is angle A. And so get cosine of A by itself, so subtract 44,944 to the left side of the equation, and also subtract 52,900 to the left side of the equation, and you'll have negative 97,520 times cosine of A is equal to negative 83,444. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 97,520, or the number in front of the cosine function. And so you'll have cosine of A on one side of the equation is equal to 83,444 divided by 97,520. And so if you want to get a by itself, you need to undo the cosine function. Well, to do that, you need to take the inverse cosine function on both sides of the equation. So take the inverse cosine function on the left side of the equation. Inverse cosine of cosine of a will just be a because inverse cosine and cosine are inverses of each other. They'll just cancel each other out. And then also make sure you take the inverse cosine on the right side of the equation. So inverse cosine of 83,444 divided by 97,520. And so again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode so that we can actually find out the angle A actually in degrees. So second cosine of 83,444 divided by 97,520, close parenthesis on the inverse cosine function, and this is approximately 31.167, or if you round the two decimal places, 31.17 degrees. So the angle between the two cables from the tugboat to the barge actually forms an angle of 31.17 degrees. And we found out the angle using the law of cosines because we had a side-side-side triangle. In example three, we're going to solve a triangle. Solve the following oblique triangle by finding the lengths of the missing sides and the missing angles. Round your answers to two decimal places. So we're given this triangle, this oblique triangle. We have angle A is unknown, angle B is unknown, angle C is unknown, but we have side A is 5, side B is length 8, side C has length 12. So we have three sides in the triangle that are known, but three angles are unknown. So again, this is an oblique triangle. It's a side-side-side triangle or a SSS triangle. So we have to use a law of cosines because we don't know any of the angles. So let's find out the angle A first. So if we want to find out angle A, we need to use this equation or this formula. A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. Subtract 2 times B times C times cosine of angle A. 
So since we're trying to find out angle A, we're going to use this formula where it has A squared on the left side of the equation. So A squared would be 5 squared on one side of the equation is equal to B squared, 8 squared, times C squared, which will be 12 squared. Then subtract 2 times B times C, so 2 times 8 times 12, times cosine of angle A. So simplify all the square numbers. 5 squared is 25, 8 squared is 64, and 12 squared is 144. Subtract 2 times 8 times 12, that's subtract 192, then times cosine of A. So again, we want to get the cosine of A by itself on one side of the equation so we can find out the angle A's measure. So subtract 64 to the left side of the equation and subtract 144 also to the left side of the equation. You'll get negative 183 is equal to negative 192 times cosine of angle A. And then divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of the cosine function. So divide both sides of the equation by negative 192. And so you'll have cosine of A is equal to 183 divided by 192. And if we want to get the angle A by itself, you need to use the inverse cosine function. So A is equal to inverse cosine of 183 divided by 192, which would be inverse cosine of 183 divided by 192, close parenthesis on the inverse cosine function, and that's approximately 17.612, or if you round the two decimal places, 17.61 degrees. That's the measure of angle A in this oblique triangle. So now let's find out the measure of angle B using the law of cosine in the same way. So if you want to find out the measure of angle B, we're going to use this formula, or this statement. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared. Subtract 2 times A times C times cosine of angle B. So again, B is equal to 8, A is equal to 5, and C is equal to 12. Then you'll have 8 squared is equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared. Subtract 2 times 5 times 12 times cosine of angle B. Simplify all the square numbers. 8 squared is 64, B squared is 25, and 12 squared is 144. Subtract 2 times 5 times 12. That will give you 120. So it will be subtract 120 times cosine of B and then get cosine of B on one side of the equation by itself. So you'll have 64, subtract 25, subtract 144 to the left side of the equation, that gives you negative 105, is equal to negative 120 times cosine of angle B. So divide both sides of the equation by negative 120 to get cosine of B by itself. You'll have cosine of B is equal to 105 divided by 120, and then use the inverse cosine function to get angle B by itself because the inverse cosine will help you undo the cosine function on angle B. And so angle B is equal to inverse cosine of 105 divided by 120, which would give you second cosine to get the inverse cosine function, 105 divided by 120, close parenthesis on the inverse cosine function, and that's approximately 28.955, or if you round the two decimal places, 28.96 degrees for the measure of angle B. Well, now notice, if you have two angles in the triangle, you now have angle A is 17.61 degrees, and you have angle B is 28.96 degrees. You actually can find out angle C by actually taking 180 degrees and then subtracting angle A and also subtracting angle B, and you can find out angle C because all triangles must add up to 180 degrees for their interior angles. So you can find out the measure of angle C that way, or you can use a law of cosines again to find out the measure of angle C. So if you want to find out the measure of angle C, you would use C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, subtract 2 times A times B times cosine of angle C. So C was equal to 12, so you have 12 squared on the left side of the equation, is equal to A squared would be 5 squared, plus B squared, that's 8 squared, subtract 2 times 5 times 8, times cosine of angle C. 12 squared is 144, 5 squared is 25, and 8 squared is 64. So you have 144 is equal to 25 plus 64, minus 2 times 5 times 8 will give you 80, so minus 80 times cosine of C. So again, get cosine of C by itself on one side of the equation. You'll need to subtract 25 and also subtract 64 to the left side of the equation. And so you'll have 55 is equal to negative 80 times cosine of angle C. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 80. You'll have cosine of C is equal to 55 divided by negative 80. And then use the inverse cosine function to help you cancel out the cosine as so you have angle C left over. So angle C is equal to inverse cosine of the right side of the equation will be inverse cosine of 55 divided by negative 80, which would be second inverse cosine function of 55 divided by negative 80 is approximately 133.433, or if you round the two decimal places, 133.43 degrees. So that actually solves the oblique triangle. We were given the three sides of the triangle and we found out the measure of all three angles. Measure of angle A was 17.61 degrees, measure of angle B was 28.96 degrees, and the measure of angle C was 133.43 degrees. So that's one way you can solve this oblique triangle. You can use the law of cosines three times to find out the measure of each of the three angles. However, you actually can use a shortcut. After you find out the measure of angle A, 
you can use the law of sines now, because now you have an angle that is opposite a known side. So if you use the law of sines, because you now have a side-side angle triangle, a SSA triangle, because you have the included angle and the side opposite the known angle, you can use a law of sines, which is sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to sine of angle B divided by the length of side B. You can use this law of sines to now find out the measure of angle B, rather than using the law of cosines. So we know sine of angle A, that's sine of 17.612 degrees, divided by the length of side A, that was 5, is equal to sine of angle B, which is unknown to us, if we only have angle A so far, and it's divided by the length of side B, which was 8. So remember how the law of sines works. You can cross multiply because this proportion has two fractions equal to one another. So 8 times sine of 17.612 degrees is equal to 5 times sine of B. So if you want to get sine of B by itself, so you can use the inverse sine function, you need to divide both sides of the equation by 5. So sine of B is equal to 8 times sine of 17.612 degrees divided by 5. And now if you want to undo the sine function, use the inverse sine function, so that way you can get B by itself. B is equal to inverse sine of the right side of the equation, inverse sine of 8 times sine of 17.612 degrees divided by 5 inside the inverse sine function, which would be inverse sine of 8 times sine of 17.612 degrees, close parenthesis on the sine function, then divide by 5, and then close parenthesis on the inverse sine function, and that's approximately 28.954 degrees, or if you round the two decimal places, 28.95 degrees for the measure of angle B. So that's using the law of sines. You can actually find out the measure of angle B or the measure of angle C once you know one of the angles in the triangle. Well, how does that compare with what we had before with the law of cosines? We had the measure of angle B was 28.955 degrees. The law of sines has 28.954 degrees. So it's extremely close. The only reason why the answers are a little off is because we rounded our answer for angle A to be 17.612 degrees and we used that rounded answer in the law of sines. But the answers are extremely close for the angle B using the law of sines or the measure of angle B using the law of cosines. And if you're using the law of sines, once you have two different angles known, angle A was known as 17.612 degrees and angle B was known as 28.954 degrees, the measure of all three interior angles of the triangle must equal 180 degrees. So the measure of angle C would be 180, subtract 28.954 degrees, Subtract so measure of angle A, which was 17.612 degrees, so the measure of angle C is 133.434 degrees. So there are many different ways to actually find out what is the measure of angle A, B, or C using the law of cosines, find out one of the angles, and then you can use the law of cosines to find out the other two angles, or once you know one angle, you can use the law of sines to find out the measure of the other two angles. So notice in this last example, we use the law of sines to find the measure of angle B, and we also found out the measure of angle C because we knew all three sides and we knew one of the angles that was actually in the triangle. However, knowing the sine of an angle does not uniquely specify the angle. As we saw in the previous video, there were two different ambiguous cases. You have the possibility of having no solution, no triangle can be formed, or you could have two solutions. In other words, two triangles could be formed. Since the angle theta and its supplement, 180 degrees to track theta, have the same value for the sine function. In other words, we would need to decide which of the two angles is actually the correct choice. This ambiguity does not arise when you actually use the law of cosines as we solve this last problem the first way. Because every angle between 0 degrees and 180 degrees has a unique value for the cosine function. This means that the law of cosines is a preferable method to actually find out the unknown angles if you have all three sides of an oblique triangle. So let's finish up this video by talking about navigation, heading, and bearing. In navigation, a direction is often given as a bearing, which means that it's an acute angle measured from due north or due south. The bearing in 30 degrees E indicates a direction that points 30 degrees to the east of due north. So from the north direction, you are 30 degrees in the east direction. So that angle between north and the direction that you're actually heading is a bearing. It's in 30 degrees E. So example four, we're going to talk about pilot navigation. Suppose that a pilot sets out from an airport and heads in the direction 20 degrees east of due north, flying at 200 miles per hour. After one hour, the pilot makes a course correction and heads in the direction 40 degrees east of north. Half an hour after that, engine trouble forces the pilot to make an emergency landing. So part one, find the distance between the airport and the pilot's final landing point. So point A will actually be the airport. So that's where the pilot actually took off. And now our first bearing was 20 degrees east of due north. So that's this angle. So that's the heading that the pilot actually took first. 
It was 20 degrees east of due north. Then you get to point B, and then there's a course correction by the pilot. They take a bearing of 40 degrees east of due north. So that would be from due north, this course correction forms a 40 degree angle with due north. So now notice, we actually have a triangle that can be formed to find out what is the length or the distance between the airport and the final landing point, which is point C. We know that the pilot actually traveled 200 miles between points A and B, and then we knew that the pilot actually traveled 100 miles between the course correction and the final landing point. We want to find out what is the side opposite this angle B. And so now we can actually find out the measure of angle B. Measure of angle B is 180 degrees, subtract 20 degrees, or 160 degrees. Because you have to think about this as if you continue in the direction of 20 degrees east of due north, then it actually forms a straight line through angle B and this angle here. Well, this angle is actually 20 degrees. So if this is a 20 degree angle and it forms a straight line, that means that angle B and this 20 degree angle are actually supplementary angles, and so angle B must be 160 degrees. So we have the angle B and we have two sides of a triangle, this oblique triangle. We can use the law of cosines to find out the length of the side opposite angle B. And so we use this formula for the law of cosines. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared, subtract so two times A times C times cosine of angle B. We know what the measure of angle B is, is 160 degrees, and we want to find out what is the length of side B. So B squared on one side of the equation is equal to A squared plus C squared will be 100 squared plus 200 squared. Subtract so two times A times C will be two times 100 times 200 times cosine of 160 degrees. And so on the left side of the equation, you have B squared is equal to on the right side of the equation, you have 10 squared is 10,000, plus 200 squared is 40,000. Subtract 2 times 100 times 200, that's subtract 40,000 times cosine of 160 degrees. And if you calculate the right side of the equation, 10,000 plus 40,000, subtract 40,000 times cosine of 160 degrees, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, then you find out it's approximately 87,587.70483. That's equal to b squared. However, you want to find out the value of b, not b squared. So you need to take the square root on both sides of the equation. And keep in mind that b is representing a distance, so it will not be a negative value. It will only be positive. So the square root of 87,587.70483 is approximately 295.952. Or if you round the two decimal places, 295.95. And so the distance between the airport and the pilot's final landing point is approximately 295.95 miles using the law of cosines. So let's finish up with part two. Find the bearing from the airport to the pilot's final landing point. In other words, we want to find out what is this angle if we actually traveled from point A to point C directly, what is this bearing from due north? So we can find out what is the measure of angle A using the law of sines. So sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to sine of angle B divided by the length of side B. That will give us sine of angle A divided by the length of side A, we'll call 100 because that's opposite angle A is 100 miles, is equal to sine of 160 degrees because that was measure of angle B divided by the length that we just found was the side B was 295.95 miles. So you have this proportion using the law of sines. You have these two fractions equal to one another. You can cross multiply and those cross products are equal. So 100 times sine of 160 degrees is equal to 295.95 times sine of angle A. If you want to find out the measure of angle A, you need to get sine of angle A by itself on one side of the equation. So divide both sides of the equation by 295.95. So sine of A is equal to 100 times sine of 160 degrees divided by 295.95. And then if you want to get A by itself, you need to undo the sine function. So take the inverse sine function on both sides of the equation because the inverse sine function is the inverse of the sine function. They'll undo each other. And so on the left side of the equation, you'll have A by itself. And then on the right side of the equation, you have to do inverse sine of 100 times sine of 160 degrees, close the parenthesis on the sine function, and then divide by 295.95, and then close the parenthesis on the inverse sine function, and that's approximately 6.636, or if you're around the two decimal places, 6.64. And this is actually an angle, so it's degrees. So what that means is that angle A is actually a 6.64 degree angle. However, we're trying to find out the bearing east of due north. That means we need to take the angle A and add 20 degrees to find out what is the bearing east of due north. So the final bearing is 26.64 degrees east of due north. If the pilot took off from point A and directly flew to point C. So this finishes our video on the law of cosines. We talked about how to use the law of cosines to solve oblique triangles and also solve applied problems using the law of cosines. If you have any questions about any examples of this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about trigonometric identities.